the foremost function of a pressure vessel is to safely handle operating and design scenarios while avoiding any leakage or rupture but at the same time economic consideration is also vital and quite interestingly pressure vessel design is a compromise between safety and economy with safety given more consideration and we can bridge these two aspects by application of a pressure vessel code in a sense that these codes especially you can talk of asmi codes they provide minimum safety requirements which connect these two points historically by application of codes and standards the industrial accidents which became commonplace at the start of the last century have been drastically reduced almost all of the developed and developing countries have their own set of codes which are applicable globally for instance in america one of the most popular bpvc codes are asmi section a division 1 2 and 3 in europe we have en 13445 and one of the most popular pressure vessel code is bs 5500 which is now called pd 5500 In Germany we have AD Mark Blatter. In France we have CODEP and FNOR codes. In China we have GB150 code for pressure vessel. For Australia and New Zealand we have 1200 1210 and in Italy ANCC code. One should consider that real world failure mechanisms that can affect a pressure vessel can't be understood exactly due to time technology and money constraints and in order to be reasonably effective codes generally adopt semi empirical methods with built in assumptions and approximations and as a result there is a need for design margin which is famously called safety factor also although in some cases it's not the right synonym this design margin of safety factor is the ratio of a material property like uts or ultimate tensile strength and yield strength with the allowable stress and it accounts for unknown factors in design materials construction and operation for instance several codes including asmi section 8 division 1 considers material to be uniform and free of defects such as voids or micro cracks but in reality every material has flaws and discontinuities this justifies the code adopted design margin to account for the unknown the graph shown here which shows yield and allowable stress for various codes is indicative only and it just signifies that asmi section 8 division 1 has lower allowable stress compared to other codes such as division 2 and en and pd codes and obviously is more conservative than them Here I have listed current design margin of some ASME BPVC and piping codes like for section 1 which is used for power boilers the design margin is 3.5 for nuclear section 3 codes currently it is 3 for section 8 division 1 it is 3.5 for division 2 class 1 it is 3 and for class 2 it is 2.4 for section 8 division 3 it is 1.8 and for power piping b31.1 it is 3.5 and b31.3 it is currently 3 in this slide we'll see what is the code criteria behind allowable stresses as we see that bpvc material properties are listed in asmi section 2 and we will refer here to part d and mandatory appendix 1 and table 1-100 The first thing to note that material properties selected for the temperatures below creep range are tensile strength and yield strength whereas above creep range rupture strength is used so allowable stress should not exceed the minimum of the following so at temperatures below creep range a specified minimum tensile strength divided by 3.5 at room temperature or tensile strength divided by 3.5 at design temperature or specified minimum yield strength multiplied by a factor of 2 by 3 at room condition or yield strength multiplied by 2 by 3 at design condition at temperatures in the range where creep 
and stress structure strength govern the selection of stresses the maximum allowable stress value should be minimum of the following it should be 100% of the average stress to produce a creep rate of 0.01% in 1000 hours or 100 times f average percentage of the average stress to cause rupture at the end of 100000 hours or 80% of the minimum stress to cause rupture at the end of 100000 hours In the next slide, I have converted this uh, tabular value into a graphic. So for allowable stresses, it first divided into type of material, which is rot or cast against the welded. And then the properties are divided at room temperature and above room temperature. And for above room temperature, it is further divided into above creep and below creep range. So for room temperature, for rot and cast, it is tensile strength divided by 3.5 or yield strength multiplied by a factor of 2 by 3. Whereas for welded, a uh, factor of 0.85 is added to the same value like 0.85 divided by 3.5 into tensile strength. And for yield, it is yield strength multiplied by 0.85 into a factor of 2 divided by 3. For above room temperature and below creep range, the tensile and yield are same like divided by 3.5 and multiplied for yield multiply by a factor of 2.3 and similarly for uh, welded section it's just multiplied by a factor of 0.85 rest is the same and above room temperature and above creep zone we have for rot and cast a stress rupture multiplied by a factor of 0.8 and one times the creep rate whereas for welded section for above creep range a stress rupture multiplied by 0.8 into a factor of 0.85 for welded and creep rate multiply by 1.0 into 0.85 for welded section and in the figure double stress is given for in certain cases for austenitic stainless steel and nickel copper and cobalt alloys a higher yield is permitted above room temperature so we can replace this factor of 2 by 3 by a value of 0.9 